black grass, every farmer's worst nightmare, and indeed all grass weeds. So what can we do about it? Well, that's been the subject of a two-year study that we've done looking at harvest weed seed control. Harvest weed seed control is about introducing a new window for grass weed control. Now this is using a seed control unit. So this is a unit that's fitted to the back of the combine and it processes the chaff as it goes through the combine. This is technology that's been used very effectively in places like Australia and Canada. The question is, is it gonna work here in the UK climate and the European climate? That's what we've been looking at and we've been working with Redicop to find out. Now we know that what happens with the harvest weed seed control unit um, is that the weed seed comes through the combine and it goes out in, in, the, in the chaff stream and it's there that it's beaten about uh, up to four times and we know that about 98% of that seed is then made unviable uh, and doesn't germinate in the crop afterwards. So we've been working with Redicop and here's Trevor Thiessen. Hi, I'm Trevor Thiessen and I'm with Redicott Manufacturing. I'm one of the owners of the business. So we got involved with uh, Niab and Boffin on a project to look at harvest weed seed control and the use of that in the UK environment. Um, that started about two years ago um, with just one project, uh, one piece of equipment with Niab, where they were testing a case combine equipped with one of our seed mills. And then last year we expanded that, we added three farmers. So we have Jake Freestone, who's working with a John Deere Combine. And we have Adam Driver, who's got a Kloss Lexian. And then the last uh, is Ted Holmes uh, with Velcourt Farms, who's running a New Holland. We're just super excited to, to be working with some very innovative farmers and the Boffin Group to, to help understand this. So before you start selling something, it's always important to understand what the real market opportunity is. And we wouldn't be able to do that without the support of you know, farmers who are willing to put the machines on their combines and test it and trial it. Um, and without people like Boffin and Niab to kind of support the research efforts. So as suggested by Trevor, one of the first farmers to get involved was uh, Adam Driver of Driver Farms in Suffolk. I'm Adam Driver from Driver Farms. We're farming about 2000 hectares in West Suffolk. Um, predominantly contract farming agreements, FBTs um, and a joint venture. So we were interested in, in putting the SCU onto our combine because we have a big black grass problem and we started noticing that on our controlled traffic farming system we were getting strips of black grass behind the combine which was suggesting to me that some black grass at least was going through the combine and it felt like a good, good idea to try and deal with some of that. On top of that we also have brome I've seen in the past, the, the previous iteration of the SCU, the chaff deck, I've seen very good results from that on brome on other people's farms. So that was another reason for having it. I'm also worried about ryegrass becoming an issue. It's not an issue here yet, but it is creeping ever closer. Uh, and obviously the SCU was originally developed for ryegrass. So if we can nip that problem in the bud before it ever becomes a problem or becomes like a black grass, um, then that's another bonus of it. So hopefully we never see ryegrass on the farm because we're, any small bits we have are being controlled by the SCU. Well, the monitoring carried out by Niab on Adam's farm found sure enough, the black grass was being deposited in strips behind the combine. And that's potentially a problem in terms of the high black grass population it leaves in the center of the combine cut of the control traffic system. Monitoring of the black grass still standing at harvest at Adams Farm revealed 54% was still in the air when harvesting winter wheat. That's higher than we thought, although it was an unusual harvest in 2022 with crops ripening fast. On Ted's farm, ryegrass was the issue, which was monitored by Niab in the crop after the one where the SCU had been used, compared with where the SCU had been disengaged. Following spring barley, researchers found a 44% reduction in the population of Italian ryegrass where the SCU had been used, and a 60% reduction in the crop following winter barley, also attributable to the SCU. So that was great to get those results from year one of the trial, but the problem was it was a very low number of seed samples. What we needed were uh, more seed from more sites, more people involved in the project. So that's what led us into year two, and this one was funded by DEFRA as part of its Farming Innovation Pathways 
So Boffin engaged a team of 43 seed scouts and we all collected seed samples and sent them in to Will Smith at NIAB for testing in the lab. So the idea of this was to gauge how much weed seed was standing at harvest. So we came up with three different protocols because we weren't entirely sure just how easy it was going to be to do this measurements. You know, weed scientists had done it for many years, but farmers hadn't. So the first protocol was the most intense protocol. We asked farmers to sample their, their grass weeds uh, as soon as they'd come out in full head uh, and to take 20 heads, count all of the seeds in those heads um, and, and make a record of that. Then come back into their field just the day before harvest and take 20 heads again and count those all the seeds in the head. And that would give you a good idea of how much weed seed was still standing uh, as opposed to what was originally produced in the field. Um, the second protocol was to do very much the same, but instead of counting all the seeds, um, just measure the seed head uh, at each and, and then near harvest measure how much of the seed head still had seed in it. And then the third protocol was just to measure it at harvest time. Along with the work with the seed scouts collecting our seed samples, we also worked again with the three farmers with the SCUs, the same three farmers as last year, but we also introduced another farmer, Keith Challen. So we're in a field of wheat here. This is X Day's fourth wheat. Uh, we're on very heavy clay soils here. So this field in particular is about 89% clay, very high magnesium, and we have poor drainage. So the soil lies wet and black grass has been a particular problem here for the last 30 years. Now, we had thought up until this year we were beating it and now we've got the worst black grass in this field we've ever seen. So historically, uh, black grass here is all triple R resistant and has been for many, many years. So the answer doesn't come out of a can. You know, while we can get probably 90% control, that's all we get and it's that 10% that's killing us. So over the years, we've tried everything. We've gone to spring cropping and brought spring barley into the rotation and that has helped. Uh, and we were cleaner than we are now. It's been this protracted year where the herbicides worked brilliantly until March and after that, everything grew. And so the next step for us was there is a number of ears or a number of seeds on ears at harvest with the black grass. So if we can control it through the combine, that's going to add another couple of percent the picture. So for us the, the SCU was the next logical step really because uh, as well as black grass we've got brome. I'm very nervous about the ingress of rye grass, it's in the area. Um, I want to be able to control weed seeds on the combine as well as volunteers. So when I heard about the uh, SCU project it made perfect sense. So if we can destroy the viability of the seed to a very high percentage then that's a big step forward. We're not trying to kill something that's grown, we prevented it from growing. And that for me is fundamental. Incredibly difficult harvest. We received some really great feedback about the SCU. And of course, we got the results back from all of our seed scouts. So let's find out from John just what these results have told us. Well, we've finished our evaluation of the seed mill now to go alongside the seed scout data on seed shed levels and there's a lovely agreement between the two sets of data. You can see that there are differences between species in terms of the effectiveness of the seed mill. And a lot of that is driven by seed shed characteristics. But the headline figure for the evaluation of the seed mill on commercial farms is that we're getting, um, we're measuring a 5% reduction in seedlings in the following crop for black grass, something like about 40% for Italian ryegrass. And, upwards of 70 percent for brome species now it's really important to understand how we've come by those figures they're not the efficacy of the mill itself we can assume safely that these seed mills are very very effective for all seeds that go into the mill itself we are talking about what happens in the following crop whether you use the seed mill or not and that's driven by the underlying biology of the weed um, the flux that's to do with rotations and cultivations, but also whether we've used the seed mill or not. So those values are very conservative, but they do give us the first insight as to how effective a harvest weed seed capture using a seed mill strategy 
would be in practice on UK farms. It's important, I think, to put those numbers in some sort of context. This is not a pseudo herbicide. This is a completely different paradigm for weed control. We're talking about our, this harvest weed seed capture approach, capturing seed that could be produced by any plants that do survive your attempts at control. So you're almost stacking it on top of uh, conventional weed control. You could think of it like a, a culture control approach or a non-chemical approach to some extent. And those numbers, 40% for Italian ryegrass, 70% for brome, they're really good contributions. They're equivalent, for example, in the case of Italian ryegrass to a month's delay in drilling in the autumn. Now, just to put that in context, you could either think of it as a way of changing your rotation. It gives you the facility to deal with volunteers, reduce weed burden in crops in the rotation where your weed control is particularly difficult or expensive. You could think of it uh, of allowing you to grow crops in a slightly different way. So maybe drilling a bit earlier in the autumn, but knowing you've got this reliability of capturing a proportion of the seeds that, that will be shed by those weeds surviving control. So for, if you say 40 to 70%, they're really up there at the sort of levels that you could achieve with other non-chemical culture control approaches. Well, what an exciting two years this has been and, and, and how much we've learned uh, about harvest weed seed control and the Redicop seed control unit. Well, the exciting news is that DEFRA has now released details of the next round of the Farming Equipment and Technology Fund, where you can get up to 60% um, fund to pay for a combine mounted seed control unit like the Redicop one that we've been exploring. Now, we're going to be working with our boffin farmers to help them get the most out of that um, and to supporting them in doing that. And that's going to include a webinar on the 11th of April. So look out for details of that webinar, sign up, where we'll have some information about how to get involved with the Farming Equipment Technology Fund, the results from this year's trial, um, and also some more information about harvest weed seed control. But we're taking it forward as well so we're looking at grass weed control, non-chemical grass weed control, and we're looking to set up a new platform. So this is the Grass Weed Resilience Alternative Strategies Platform, or GRASP. We're currently looking for funding for that. We're bringing partners together, and this is involving a whole range of commercial companies, as well as research institutes, to really get a grip on grass weeds. That's what this project is all about, to bring the control of grass weeds within farmer's grasp.